and I, I'll leave this in. Somebody told me the other day, they were like, oh, I'm going on a vacation. I was like, cool, where are you going? They're like, well, we're taking the kids. We're going in over here. And I was like, that's not a vacation. A vacation is no kids. Taking the mm. kids is a, you're just parenting somewhere else. Well, like I told you what Bowman said. Bowman calls it a relocation, not a vacation. Yeah, like you're, you're it's remote your parenting. Responsibilities. Mm. Just parenting with shorts on. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Out the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Zach. This is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Uh, I, I say that tonight we'll probably go a little more automotive. We'll be everywhere tonight. Um, mainly because Zach doesn't only do off-road truck stuff. And Ross and I like cars too. So we're going to talk sure. about... Tonight's an episode for us, basically, is what we're saying. So if you came here to talk about only all-wheel drive, 4x4, things that get dirty, sorry? Car people sorry. like car things. Truck yeah. people like truck things. Car people like was, truck things. Truck people like car things. It's all in good. Fun. I get I get weird like YouTube shorts and Instagram reels suggested to me, and it was like content creator bullshit. And it was like talk about whatever you want to talk about. Don't get too niche. And I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> of course, I got that today as we have this recording already <laughs> scheduled for tonight. I was like, yeah. yes, I am doing what I want to do. Like, look <laughs> at me, I'm fancy. So yeah. Um, where you want to start, yeah. Ross? Jeep Wrangler 392. I know you guys both have had seat time in it, and I just spent a week with, or currently I'm still spending a week with a 2024 Firecracker Red Wrangler 392. Um, You're going to so get a 2024, ticket. <laughs> huh? You're going to get a ticket. You're the red one? Like- <laughs> Dude, it is the loudest, most visually and like audibly loud Jeep that I've ever experienced. Every time I get in it and start it, hogs. I laugh. It does the same thing that like the C8 Corvette does that like, brap, you know, like that really <laughs> fast, like <laughs> dumps fuel somehow. Uh, but it's, yeah, so the 24s, so they put side curtain airbags in. It's got the bigger screen. It's got uh, heated and power seats, which apparently all of this was difficult to figure out because you take the roof off, electronics get wet. How do you, you know, prevent the electronics from that taking? Wait, they just short. now have powered seats and Wranglers. Yes, twenty twenty four, first time ever. Yep. Um, I, I guess I've only ever gotten in manually adjustable seats, so I've never yeah. thought about powered seats and Wranglers. Yep. So I never noticed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like, it's wow. twenty four. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. It's like you know, joining breaking the, news. Join a 2002 era for like four runners, you know. Um, but it's it's got the the one touch the sky one touch roof, yeah, and a couple other things, and it's like ninety five thousand dollars, which is a big, big, big number. Is uh, it? So that's it what I've, been, I, I've had some people saying that's way too much, and the counter argument is that if you bought a V6 or or Turbo 4 Wrangler option with everything that the 392 comes with and then sent it to like AV or you know one of the companies that does a V8 swap with the with the 64 yeah that's 120 grand and then you don't have factory warranty like off the shelf you know at your local Jeep body. dealer you'd have to send it yeah. back to AEV if something went wrong or or or, or unfuck it yourself yeah um so in that sense it is kind of a bargain i mean don't get me wrong 95 grand <laughs> 95 like anything, is a bargain <laughs> like 95 grand is a, it's a crazy crazy number that's more than the track hawk was you know but it, it it's the best thing ever i like i've i tried to describe it to people like sitting in the driver's seat of the wrangler looking out over the wrangler's hood and hearing that noise and having that kind of acceleration. And it's not like, it's not just better in the engine department. Like it rides better than a Wrangler ever has. It steers better. It's more comfortable, you know, like they beefed up a whole bunch of other things to go with the engine and it just makes for a better vehicle. And like that, the new screen's great. Power seats obviously are a nice thing. Um, the sky one touch roof thingamajig is a nice feature. Um, but it's just, it's 
it's perfect. Like I, I, I understand completely why Holman, you know, bought one after driving one. It, it's just great. It's so much fun. It's so silly. It's, I, I don't know if I've ever enjoyed a week with a vehicle this much. Well, do you really That's, enjoy on asphalt though? Like driving it around yeah. town? Do you really, I really enjoy that? Absolutely love it. So don't forget okay. the roads yeah. here are abysmal. You know, and it just works. I, it's hard to explain. Like, I didn't take it off-road. Um, I have no qualms saying that on our off-road focused show, you know. Uh, obviously, I wish I would have, but, you know, that whole finishing the MBA thing didn't really, <laughs> didn't really work with the timing on that front. But even on the street, you know, because the Wrangler has its own personality, like it feels nimble, it feels still kind of small compared to a lot of other SUVs, and it just, it's just got its own personality. Oh, I, I don't right. know what that—that's one of the concepts that they showed. It is. Um, was that when you uh, get a red interior? The 2024s, the 392s only have a red have interior. Red interior. Yeah. Okay, that might sell me. That might sell it's me right there. It's pretty fucking great. And so, like, it's comfortable, you know, and it still has Jeep quirks. Like, there's no dead pedal. And, you know, the seating position is like you're in an office chair, <laughs> you know, and getting getting my daughter's uh, car seat stroller combo thing and through the back door. Yeah, that's uh, not for is this vehicle. <laughs> almost as difficult as it was in the Challenger Swinger. Um, but it's just, man, it's just so, it's just a good time. Like it doesn't take itself too seriously and it's just, it's fucking fast and, like, and yeah. loud, you know, and having that experience sitting at that height with the Jeep, like surrounding you is just, it's, it's, I, I, I would buy one in a heartbeat if I could afford it so and my- I would tell everybody <laughs> that can to do so. The reason I brought this picture up is with the one touch roof, I love this angle yes. of the roof on it when you take the roof off all of the other ones that it, it has you lose this squared off back portion and for mm-hmm. whatever reason it is pleasing to my eye i enjoy well seeing them so you have to remove there's a panel behind this between the c and d pillars that's just a big rectangle and there's like two latches along the fr- uh, uh is i don't know if it's along the roof or along the Roll bar. No, it must be along the roof, and you just like unlatch it and go to the other side and pop it out. And right. they go into a bag. And that's what opens up that big space. It's great. I've it. got I've got the guy so, pulling so it out. Good. I love I love I love talking about Jeep stuff because I can always find an image on the internet of what we're talking about. <laughs> There's it's so Lego. many it's Lego. The other thing about this about the 392, like, and given, you know, I've been driving sports cars and and you know, my Lexus, which is Quite a bit heavier than the Wrangler and um, <laughs> quite a bit. E-rated tires and everything. Um, but the Jeep rides really well. Like I've never driven a Wrangler that that actually like feels properly damped like this from the factory. And I know that, you know, 35 inch tires on 17 inch wheels help that, but it's like comfortable. It rides, so it rides, really it rides, that's rides that's really good my, to hear. Rides and this is my, my Lexus. It rides better than your Lexus? So this is the only time I was frustrated with the way the 392 rode was when I was driving it back to back with the Bronco Raptor as well. So getting that Raptor suspension, like, don't get me wrong, 392 is amazing. I love it. It's a giggle fest. But the ability to go quick with Raptor suspension right afterwards is like, that was amazing. But this suspension changes my life, basically. (laughs) That's also... (laughs) That's 37s too on a 17 inch wheel. So right. it's got even more built in tire suspension. And it was cheaper. But it's not better looking. No, I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not talking about visuals or anything like that. It Actually, is, and like you have a Bronco that you're testing right now for the first time. I, I've been in some pre-production week. ones and then I played with the Braptor uh, back in May. And I think you have you and I have similar takes on the on the Broncos. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, but speaking of Bronco Raptor, I don't know if you guys saw, but Ford announced this week, yesterday. I, I don't even know what day it is. 
that for the 2024 model year, you'll be able to get your Bronco Raptor with painted fender flares to match the body. Yes. Which is a game That's nice. And there was, there was a code, is it code orange? Mm -hmm. Is there Ford performance? There was like, you could get, I know we always joke about like red, red toe hooks. I think you can get orange toe hooks and other stuff like orange beadlock rings. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it doesn't make it any less. It's not subtle. Let's say that. <laughs> Chris, I, I hope you uh, Well, I was trying to find, <laughs> I went to Ford Media site because you normally can pull information and things like that on something yeah. that was yeah. just talked about. Nothing. Yeah. The painted fender, fenders also accentuate those crazy splash Raptor graphics. It's, yeah. To look man so uh yeah only awesome. other things on my front here yes the bronco shut up bronco badlands is here for a week so more to come on that and the gx i have not made any progress on the driver side rock slider install i'm working with white knuckle off-road to try to deduce why this is being the situation that it is but john out at white knuckle has been great and uh and by the time we record the next show, the driver's side slider should be on to match the passenger's side one that's been on for 10 days now. <laughs> so I'm driving the, around with one. The good news is, is that you don't need the extra step to get into your vehicle where your wife and daughter probably appreciate it. That is true. Well, my daughter is <laughs> my daughter's walking and doing steps on her own and running, um, but she is not yet climbing into the back of the Lexus. Just That's wait, man. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she'll start so climbing that's soon. That's that, that's all I got. What about you? My update is that all the kids are back in school, and it's magical to actually have <laughs> time to think. Um, but now work has has decided to be like, no, 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 you're going to do a lot of stuff now. And I was like, cool. So, um, and then we've also now happens. figured out that if you have a sophomore who's good. That's a pain in the butt for football season because he's good enough to be the backup for varsity, but be a starter for JV. So like, I was like, oh, we're not going to eight football games. We're going to 16 football games. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the seventh grader has also decided to play school football. So there will be six more. And he's playing club. Bit. Like uh, I showed you my calendar recently and you giggled at me because of how insane it was. <laughs> and that's just, that hasn't changed. Um, practices, Fridays, all that stuff. It's, it's, I was, I was like, what, what can I do to the cars? Like the other day I had a free day. I was like, I can clean stuff. I could do stuff. I, I didn't do anything. I didn't, <laughs> I, I, I went and tried to tear a bush out. And then I realized that my gas line is potentially underneath the root ball of this bush. <laughs> and you know, you always see those like call before you dig <laughs> commercials. Oh my yeah. God. And like, right. And I was like, I could hook up the truck and pull this bush. Out. I was like, there is a non-zero chance that the roots of this oh, plant man. are cradling my gas line beneath yeah. the ground somewhere. So it's been uh, great podcast content though. Would it, if the house exploded <laughs> with the laptop and everything in it and um, yeah, that would have been terrible. Yeah. Um, this so is yeah, Chris I, podcasting from uh, Kansas City Memorial Hospital, or whatever it's called. <laughs> well, we have a number of them, but none of them are called that. Um, <laughs> at least I don't think I've never heard of one like that. So if we have, I just it, made, I made it up. It's probably on the Missouri side. We don't talk about the Missouri side, Ross. So that's mm. it's a faux pas. Mm. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So I actually, I put the request in the other day. So I'm waiting for all of the, specifically the gas company and everybody else to come out and tell me where the lines are with some spray mm-hmm. paint. And then I will eliminate that bush. Um, yeah, you can pull it out with a truck. No, I'm going to get in hands and knees and do, do mm-hmm. it like you're supposed to as a good homeowner. Um, my gas line is within six feet of my neighbor's gas hookup as well. So like, I don't, I don't mm. want two of us struggling. Like mm. he's a good neighbor. We, we struggling we do. to live, huh? Struggling to live. No, after I mean, if we blow up, blow up both houses. Yeah, yeah it would be. But yeah, I don't want to. So hilariously, I'm actually. Uh, yeah. What do you got, Zach? 
No, I was just going to say, I'm currently sitting in my bush puller right now. We pulled Ooh. out three bushes with this thing. Did you really? What are you sitting yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's a 1931 Ford Model A. What? <laughs> so my question was, is that just like something that you casually have? And, and he said, it's actually family heirloom, which is pretty great. Yeah, basically, yeah. I had to look up what that is. Like, I don't even know what the picture if you look up a 1931 Ford Model A review, it'll probably be my video. Dude, on just on an image search, you're at the top. Ah, yes. So <laughs> it's, That's what it, we strive for, baby. It, it is it, compressing it down to like from 9K to like 300 <laughs> pixels. But it's the, your, your image number two, there's a red one and then it's your green one. So, uh, okay. All right. You, All right. you, are, you are crushing so, that. When pulling out bushes with this vehicle, was the decision mm-hmm. distinctly to use this instead of something else, or was there no other option and it was like, we're, we're doing it? It's the most torque out of anything that we have. Um, it has steel bumpers. We just tied a, a rope to the bumpers okay. and drove forward. This thing is literally, it's, it's a Ford tractor with different gearing, and that's pretty much it. Interesting. That sounds oh, about right. right. <laughs> so I used it to push. I had a 1985 Mazda RX-7. I used it multiple times to push it into the garage, just bumper to bumper, just pushing. Um, this thing rocks. That's pretty cool. It's very pretty, too. I don't, Chris, I don't know if you can pull a picture up. Dude, I'm going, I'm going so deep because I'm trying to find the actual yeah. video so I can like pause it and do <laughs> I, I just saw the picture uh, from the Google search. That is a very, very It should be green thing. with yellow wheels. Yes, it is. It yeah. is yeah. It's, yep, yep, yep. is so. it restored or is it totally original? No, so it's it's mostly original. We don't have a whole lot of info before nineteen eighty five. Um <laughs> it was a it was a twenty fifth wedding anniversary gift from my grandma to my grandpa. Um, the story goes is that she actually cashed in war bonds to oh, purchase oh um, this for my grandpa for their 25th anniversary. Uh, she passed in 2015. He passed in 2018 and left it to us. So me being a car person, I drive it any chance I get. And it's it's a blast. And it's the most reliable car we've ever owned. The hands down. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, if anything so breaks good. it's one of three things and it's it's back up and running in a couple minutes so yeah. it's one of three th- what are the three things that break uh carburetor spark because the spark plug wires are literally just strips of copper oh. like it's not protected by anything um or the distributor hmm. that's pretty much it there's no fuel pump so that can't break it has it four wheel manual drums those don't break um it's it's the most simple thing in the world. Is it? Do you drive it like a real car? Because I know there was a time like in the nineteen fifteen to nineteen thirty ish era when every manufacturer was doing something different with clutch, gas, spark timing, all that stuff on the fly. Right. So this is this is Ford's first car with the traditional driving setup. Um, so it has, you know, clutch on the far left, the brake in the center, uh, Mm -hmm. gas to the right, which the gas pedal is just a little circle. It's not a traditional gas pedal. Like we would say, you have to pay Um, extra for that in the Volkswagen these days, (laughs) (laughs) the stupid play button, you know? Um, oh yeah. Oh God. Um, but this does have the timing on the steering wheel so you can, um, advance and retard the timing as you drive and you're supposed to, Mm -hmm. I just crank it down when I'm cruising and that kind of fills in the gaps um or it really advance it all the way and um yeah it's it's absolutely mm-hmm. awesome that's pretty cool Dude, it's you driving <laughs> driving like the snow and everything no well we drove it in the snow once because um we always put it into storage around halloween and it just mm-hmm. happened to snow that day gotcha. um but it, it gets put in storage it doesn't see salt but i've driven it in monsoon style rainstorms and it, it was a white knuckle experience but it did it it did it <laughs> yeah. fine and it has a single um th- that's it i think that that's actually from my video right yeah oh okay i was like that looks eerily familiar yeah. um it has a single vacuum operated windshield wiper so vacuum as you start operated. as you start speeding up the wiper mm. slows down and then you'll get off the gas and it'll speed back up <laughs> oh my God. Which is kind of counterintuitive. <laughs> That's so sketchy. 
Yeah, so I figured it'd be a good spot to uh, record the podcast from. A little, uh, you know, car related. Why not? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. a first for us. <laughs> gotta say. So, all right. So you have this. You had an mm-hmm. RX7. What else is in your? Mm-hmm. Well, let's back up five seconds here. Why don't you introduce yourself and, and <laughs> give uh, the audience your your thirty second elevator pitch, just so everybody sure. knows who yeah. you are. <laughs> So Zach? my name is Zach. I run the Shooting Cars YouTube channel, which mainly focuses on car reviews. Um, it's a channel that started off with filming and documenting um, the build process of my first 1985 Mazda RX-7. And I quickly realized that I was going to run out of content pretty quickly. So I wanted to do something else. Car reviews was that avenue. And now I've done over 1,200 reviews um, ranging yeah. from, I mean, tons and tons of different things. Um, I really pride myself on trying to have the most diverse collection of car reviews on YouTube. I don't know if I'm there yet, but we're certainly getting there. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm. I'm right. I think I just filmed my 1200th not too long ago. Um, but yeah, it's it's insane. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of cars. <laughs> I just. <laughs> For the for the listener, I pulled up like just a, the the thumbnails of Zach's YouTube page and like 2012 Mercedes C63 AMG Coupe right next to 1988 Chevy Van 30 retired Air Force repair van. Like, yeah, can we get polar opposites? Like, <laughs> there was uh, there was a time I, I drove that four hundred thousand dollar Rolls Royce at the Mama Rally. Yeah, um, and then I drove it was some like E36 the dude bought for like 1200 bucks or something like that, like back to back days. Good. And I was like, this is like the perfect representation of what my channel is <laughs> because it's just, it's all over the place. And I, I enjoy the fact that it's all over the place that like, you know, that makes me happy. So, yeah. Yeah. so you're not pigeonholed. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. We'll, we'll see if we get there. Cars. So how yeah. do you, I mean, we, you know, obviously, most of the people, if not all the people we talk to are in automotive media and everybody has their different avenue for, you know, getting access or, or getting into the vehicles they drive. How do you, what, what's your angle on, like some people have dealer relationships, but you're not finding a 35 year old Air Force fan to deal with. <laughs> so it's literally all of the above. Um, it started off with, I, the first review I ever did was a Pontiac G6 that I had. Mm -hmm. And then I, well, actually technically the first one I filmed was my 1998 Dodge Ram, uh, 5.9 single cab, long bed, two wheel drive. That was my, that was the truck I was known for in high school. That was like my baby. Um, but then I reviewed, I think like the third review I did was my grandparents' car. Then I did my parents' cars and then it was friends cars, friends of friends cars. And then I had friends that started working at dealerships. So I got dealership relations. Um, and then as of earlier this year, I started getting press cars. So I'm kind of getting hit from all angles. Um, and I also have a submission page on my website where people all across the country and world submit their car to me. And if it, you know, fits the bill, then, um, I'll go out and film it. And that's where we were talking pre-show, um, last year I filmed in, I think it was 32 states, oh, if I'm man. remembering correctly. Man. So that's like the it, one take it's all model. over the place. It's like early exactly. one Ex- takes. Yeah. I have a process. The most I've ever filmed in one day was seven car reviews where I went back to the hotel and ate a bunch of cough drops and stared at the ceiling fan <laughs> for an hour until my eyes uh, shut. Um, so it, it, it's a formula. I kind of know, you know, how it's going to go before I do it. It's an hour and a half at most per car that I review. Um, And so I'm very fortunate to get between 10 and 15 offers a day. Um, And yeah, so it's, it's really, really been, been fun from there. And that's how I've been able to drive such a variety of vehicles. Mm -hmm. Dude, at 10 to 15 offers a day, you almost need a virtual assistant to like vet what you're looking at. (laughs) I, yeah, I have been toying with the idea of some type of help um, because I, I, I'm, I'm the only person that runs all this. Um, but really, I'll, I'll just take a peek and I'll mostly look at location. Mm-hmm. And if it's somewhere doable, then I'll kind of investigate, email them back, see what's up. Um, but like I got a uh, an email the other day from it was Bangladesh. 
And there, it was like a Hyundai i30, which we didn't get here, which is pretty cool. Right. But it was like, hey, if you ever find yourself in Bangladesh, I have this this Hyundai i30. And I was, I, I, I wanted to email him back and be like, yeah. probably not. But if you know, if Dude, I ever find myself there, that's such a cool thing about the community, though. Just like yeah. the desire for people to enjoy the things or hate or hate the things that you hate. You know, that's wow, that's crazy. Yeah. 10 to 15 and the months. other cool thing is I, I've had people email me, submit their car. I come out and film it and they're like, oh, like, I didn't know you would drive all this way for this car. And I'll say like, oh, I'm a town over. And they have no idea that like I live 20 minutes from them, <laughs> and they're funny. like, "Oh, I, I thought you were in Wisconsin, or I thought you were in California, mm-hmm. or whatever." Um, and, and so that, that, that's like, the other yes, side of that too. I am in Wisconsin. Yes. I yes. am not 20 yes. minutes away from you. <laughs> <laughs> we're not hanging out next weekend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah there have definitely funny. been some stories like that, but um, but yeah, so that that's how I'm able to to drive so many cars, and I post seven days a week, so I oh, I need oh it. My gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, that's some freaking yeah. hustle right there. Good for you. Dude, that's 365 car reviews a year. Yeah, usually I'll I'll go light January through March and do five a week. Okay. And then spring break, it's seven days a week until mm. Christmas, really. So oh my this is gosh. your full time gig? Yeah. Luckily, okay. well, that's that's how it pays the bills. So yeah. uh, Just you know, there's no sure. way I could do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that would be psychotic if you're. Yeah, I'm not like filming that. cars while managing a Circle K or anything like that. So okay. Dude, you're still yeah. young enough. You could pull off that hustle if you needed to. Like, you, yeah. Hey, man. At the end of this month, yeah. I'm off my parents' health insurance, so I'm, oh, I'm not boy. too young. I'm. Shit. I had to do that whole Welcome. thing, which is awesome as a YouTuber to get independent insurance. Welcome, yeah. to hell. love it. <laughs> Dude, there we, it is. we have a mantra that we talk about. If Canada would buy a Caribbean island, I'm in. Mm-hmm. We're there. Like I, I'd bounce immediately. Like socialized healthcare yeah. and Canadian law. Like call it good. Like yeah, yeah. No, I'd take that. Yeah. Also, uh, Canada gets the Nissan March. Yeah. Canada gets a lot of weird Acuras. Mm-hmm. And, and they're import, be a good deal. I'd take that. And wrong. their import laws like super. Easier. It's 15 instead it's of 10 25. years, right? Yeah. I or it's, I thought it's, it was 10. I know it's drastically yeah. lower than ours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why you see R35s because they've already been imported into Canada and then they dip down for a year and then they dip back up. and mm-hmm. Show and display. Yeah. Or but the R34s things. are showing up here too, which is going to be nuts. But yeah, it is what it is. I, yeah, but we're also dabbling with like unattainability, you know? like well, they, They're all going to be six the, figures. The legend status... With those and, you know, with, like, all the good leftover Mark IV Supers, yeah. it's like... Any GTR is going to be... Well, we can't even import GTRs till next year, mm-hmm. right? Because right. they're, they're 1998, so yeah. we can just get, like, the sedans and GTS coupes right now, because they started production earlier, but... I kind of want to I actually just drove an R31. Did you? How was that? Yeah, uh, last weekend I drove an R31. Very cushy and comfortable. It's not, like, <laughs> Skyline... Like it, it had an RB twenty E, which was a single overhead cam RB twenty, mm-hmm. straight six, two liter. Um, I, that video I haven't even. I just I just edited that video, but it's not out yet. Um, I think you had a picture. That was a really Twitter. cool one. Yeah, um, Instagram. I think inst- Instagram. I did like a whole. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's heinous. <laughs> what? No, Ross, that looks good. No, that's beautiful. This Come is on. very it's very Those 80s. Big round tail lights. Hyundai so... Hyundai is releasing concepts that look exactly like that right now. Yeah, which is <laughs> sick. Angle just Wait, did I post funny. an interior pick or no? Uh no, this was just like a shot of three cars. It was all exterior stuff. <sighs> Dang, okay. The interior is super plush and comfy. And it was the um it was the Passage GT yeah. <laughs> edition, uh, the trim level. Not Passage, Passage. Passage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Okay. But that was, yeah, one of three cars I did that day, I think. I should have been the MV1 and another FC RX-7. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of RX-7s, you've driven 100 million things now, and you said mm-hmm. you had a, at least one 85 
You've had three. three. You've had three. So, all right. So, what do you currently <laughs> own, and what have you owned of note? I don't know. Well, okay. I own a 2019 Mazda three right now. Okay. Um, Good that's my well. Th- that and the Model A the, the, are the only two cars that I have. I sold the RX seven in November. It was a 1985 with a 13 B swap out of a second gen. Mm -hmm. Um, so fuel injected, more power made like 160, 170 horsepower, which is a lot for a rotary. Pretty good. Um, and I sold it with the hope of buying actually a Toyota called Dina. I don't know if you've ever heard of the the Toyota called Dina. It's a right-hand drive imported. Basically it's the same size as like a Corolla. Um, yep, there it is. Oh man, I missed that car. Um, but I sold it to get the Toyota and then what year I was, was it called? Dina? Out. Um, oof. must have been like a 95. I do have a review of one. I was on saying, did you review it? <laughs> <laughs> it I didn't review up. the one I was going to buy. I was going to buy, um, I was going to buy a sedan in diesel cause I've never owned anything diesel. Okay. Um, but so what ended up happening was I was kind of putting it off. I wanted to save money over the winter and I'd buy it in the spring. <clears throat> um, at, yep, that's it. And um, looks like a super actually that, that was filmed up in Oshkosh. It's actually a, a legacy competitor. It's very very similar. Yeah. Um, but as I was saving money and trying to pick out my next project car, um, uh, I got hooked up with press cars, and so now a press car occupies the space in the driveway every week that would have been taken up by a, a, a fun car. So I don't have a fun car at the moment. Um, besides that, I did have a 93 Miata. I, I call it my nice. free trial Miata because I owned it for exactly 90 days and I made all my money back. Nice. Um, so it was literally like I got off scot-free with the insurance and the new tires and alternator I put onto it. Well done. Um, I, I made I made like two hundred bucks off of it, and I owned it for on accident exactly ninety days oh, on accident. Well. So it is it is my but, uh, my free trial Miata. That is a far cry from the uh, the C six Grand Sport I owned for exactly one hundred days, which went <laughs> the exact opposite way of your story. I remember uh, well, that car. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, those are great cars. Next topic, please. Uh, Ross wasn't. That <laughs> <laughs> was a bad time in my let's, life. Let's talk forerunners, Ross. Moving uh, on. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's talk forerunners and Miatas. Okay. Think so all Zach Ross is owned a crap ton of Miatas and forerunners. Like yes. Yeah. Well, in '93, it was the last year of the one six. Um, I loved it to death, but for the amount that I drive, I do about forty thousand miles a year. Um, <sighs> I, I couldn't do it in Miata. In a, in a, at the time, it was what, like a 27 year old Miata? Was it white? Yeah. So, yeah, I, you don't want to do Yeah, that. it was white with a red pinstripe That's down the side. Asking for either spinal surgery <laughs> or. Well, you know what happened? It shook a kidney stone loose. It sent me to the hospital. <laughs> Oh it my was, God. It, I was driving and I hit a pothole. It was on coilovers. And that's it. Oh, yeah. I put, I put a safari tire on the back Amazing. because you can't fit a full size spare in the trunk. No. So I drilled through the trunk and bolted it. Um, that was. I took that picture up at the very, very tip of Door County, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, okay. Which is a very, it was like a five oh, hour road trip. Door County, that's um, the one with the crazy road, right? Yes. Like the most I, picturesque it, road ever. This picture is taken one road over from that nice. road at my friend's lake house. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Good place to have a yeah. lake house. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful up there. Um, but, yeah, I was driving, hit a pothole, and it felt like someone stabbed me in the back. And uh, so I went home. Pain wouldn't go away. Pain wouldn't go away. Went to the hospital. Ended up being a huge kidney stone that I needed surgery for. So I always tell people that um, my Miata sent me to the hospital. That's suboptimal. Yeah, it's not favorable. That was probably the worst three weeks of my life. Oh, um, that sounds terrible. But, you know, we're, we're here to tell the tale. So yeah. that's all that matters. Live to tell a tale. Yeah. Got yeah, it. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. so what else have you been driving lately that has been of uh, particular excitement and interest to you? 
Well, that trip that I drove the R31 Skyline on, I drove a bunch of cool cars. Um, I drove a 1976 uh, Cadillac Eldorado convertible. Nice. That was cool. Um, and the same guy owned a 1988 Lincoln Town Car, which oh, yeah. was also very cool. Eclectic um, uh, earlier in the morning, I drove a Suzuki XL7, which was the okay. three-row big SUV. Yep. Um, and he that guy also had a Volvo 740 Turbo, so I drove that. Cool. Um, I, I drove the the uh, Mobility Ventures MV1. That was pretty <laughs> fun. Um, and that was, I mean, that was such a cool story. That the guy that owns it is is in a wheelchair, and so. Like, you know, love it or hate it. He's like, this is how I get to see the world is, is through this yeah. car. He can't move otherwise. So that is really, really cool. Yeah, that's the one that I drove. Um, and oh, that, that was a really, really cool story. Right. I'm trying to think of what else. Like, yeah. yeah. You so there, there, <laughs> there was a story there. The frame from something else. So it, it's based off of basically it's a Ford Explorer um underneath so it has the 4.6 modular v8 four speed auto um and it's i believe it's a tubed frame or or, or a boxed solid frame um i could be mistaken on that but it does ride like Mm -hmm. it's a body on frame vehicle um built-in power Mm -hmm. ramp um so yeah that would that was a really just interesting weird stuff and that's that's what i absolutely love so um yeah and they're still you they're still pretty popular it's a fantastic taxi it makes wheelchair accessibility so easy um and the family was telling me that they've owned chrysler pacificas town and countries they had uh i think it was a saturn relay that was handicap modified um and they were like this is like the easiest to get in and out of it rode the worst right. but it was the Priorities. easiest to get him in and out of so that was just a fun yes. interesting yeah. car yeah, yeah yeah so what else yeah so that video will be out at some point um okay. i did a pontiac aztec recently finally did an aztec i feel like that's a an automotive it's badge not that bad. Honor. um is, is it because they're it's not that It's not bad, but it's also like it's one of those just iconically ugly cars where it's like like in the same vein as the um, Nissan Murano cross cabriolet. Like I've always wanted to film one of those because it's just like so iconically bad. Um, I don't think. Yeah, which I'm I'm very proud of this picture because we put that uh, that tent up with no instructions. Well, that that's the Aztec tent, right? Yeah, it is. It's built in. It comes with every car. There's a special cubby mm. in the back for it. Um, and all we had was the brochure Man. image. They, to so go they had off it for of the Aztec. Assembly. They had it for the Avalanche. And there was one other GM vehicle, I think, that had the. Is it the uh, Buick Ronde? Maybe it was the XUV. Maybe it was. Because that was based off the Aztec. The, so I drove an XUV mm. in April, um, awesome. which was another bucket Just list terrible. weird GM car to drive. And terrible, but everything worked. Everything the, worked. The, the roof, roof worked, all awesome. the power mechanisms worked. Oh, wow. And the guy, it bef- <laughs> everything worked. And But the guy was like, please don't open it a bunch. Like, open it for your video, but like, don't yeah. be opening and closing it. Because he's like... This thing's days are numbered. I have and no idea how nobody. long these will last. So that's like um, my my son with the the LX the LX sunroof. I'm like, listen, just don't. Just like, yeah. you don't want a constant hole oh. in your roof. <laughs> my rule of thumb: any uh, sunroof or convertible top over 15 years old, I don't touch unless the owner strictly tells me to touch. Um, I drove a 2002 Porsche Boxster and convertible. And, um, I, I put the top down, it started snowing, went to put the top back up, (laughs) wouldn't go up. So ever since then, um, I don't touch it. And luckily that was a dealer car. It was a Ford dealer and I literally brought it around the back and they're like, yeah, all right, who cares? So I was like very thankful that, yeah, but, um, but yeah, that was an interesting one. Like, obviously that's 
not a good thing to happen on a shoot. Any uh, any like catastrophic failures that have happened? Only only two. That's pretty good. That I can Twelve think of, um, and both of them were solved. Um, I drove a BMW 135i that was pushing 650 horsepower. Jesus. Um, it had it was on drag radial tires on, and it was March 13th that I drove it. Uh, which here in the yeah, Midwest not, is rather it's, chilly it's not, to be on yeah, drag like, radial. That's um, not warm. <laughs> that car, when it hit red line, mm. um, went into limp mode, uh, so which was terrifying, it, obviously. Um, so I. I did a big pull car, like basically shuts off. Terrifying. I'm like sweating bullets, like on the verge of tears. Cause I'm like, I just broke my friend's car. Luckily it was a close friend of mine. Um, and I call him, I'm like, Hey man, it's in limp mode. He goes, Oh, shut it off. Turn it back on. And I'm like, you sure? Like, it does not sound happy. And he was like, turn it off, turn it back on. Oh, I did it. Oh. Drove perfectly. <laughs> um, the only other one, funny enough, was a 1931 oh Ford Model A truck, um, which the main fuse popped. I turned on the mm. headlights and it blew the main fuse. So it got no spark, got, and it was dead on the water. Sure. We what had kind to flat fuses? tow it back to the guy's house. Did but um, I think he had actually uh, updated them to modern fuses, but these were the old, like, um, okay. Uh, glass fuses yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that are, are running these. But luckily, as of two weekends ago, after I drove that Aztec, I went back out to Ohio and I redrove that Model That's A pickup awesome. and I finished the video. So as of right now, I don't have any wow. blemishes on my record. That's amazing. Every car has got Hell video. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I, I hope to keep that up. Let me knock on <laughs> the wood fixtures in here. Yeah. I was like, yeah, um, there's actual wood around you. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> That's, They're actually, yeah, I, I can't. Actually, it's part of the car. That's just amazing. knock on the floor, man. I saw tons like, of wood on the floor. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fun fact about Model A floors: the Ford was so broke during the Great Depression when they built the Model A that parts would get shipped to the factories in giant crates, and they would disassemble the crates and use it as the floorboards. So what? sometimes you'll find like Ford Motor Company stamped or like addresses stamped on your floorboards of your Model A, and that's actually how they came mm-hmm. because they were saving money by using the crates and those are parts probably more as the floorboards. Now. Oh, yeah. If you could find one that actually has Ford Motor Company right. in that, like, branded, like, burned-in stamp, like with a cat, that's, like, that's worth yeah. a lot of money. That's not Probably not a lot, but, yeah. It, it but, does yeah. increase the value. Can you imagine, like... Freaking like Teslas oh, having shit like that on them. Like that sounds like something that would happen yeah. like that nowadays. Like yeah, TVR did it back in the eighties. There was the they would do uh, graffiti mm-hmm. on the insides of your fenders, and so I drove it. It was a nineteen eighty six TVR two eighty i, and underneath the front bumper, I couldn't get a shot of it clearly, but underneath the front bumper, there was this like cartoon head with giant ears and what we ended up finding out was that there was a guy that worked at the tvr factory one of the managers had big ears and so they'd make fun of him by drawing this character underneath all the body panels so like all the tvrs have different stuff like it should be a yellow cheese wedge yep there it is immortalized (laughs) on a car by being yeah made fun of it's so good yeah, so so under underneath that front cowl, in between the headlights, on the back side, there's a little there's a little crazy. face. Oh my gosh, um, that car is super weird. It has inbound rear brakes, so the discs are right like next 18, to the diff. Like um, it yeah, it's it, it has a Ford engine. Um, I, I forget all the different parts. It has Range Rover buttons oh. on the inside. It, that's it a strange, a strange. It was car. inherently strange and somewhat fucked up. Right. Inbound. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That cow, was down right? in uh, Florida. What's up? That's not. It's not just inboard. Like it's all the way in. Like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's drive shafts out to the wheels. Like, it, that it's must be it's a very disaster. weird. Well, it's actually not terrible, according to the owner, because. All the parts are from other cars that are obtainable. 
The issue is that they didn't standardize anything. So there could be two same year TVR 280 eyes and one of them will have bigger oh, brakes gosh. because those were available that day. And one of them will have smaller brakes from a Ford Cortina. One will have like Rolls Royce brakes. It's That's, just whatever they could both. Yeah. Have. Nope. I don't need that. I don't need that kind so, of torture in my life. I yeah. Stick with my he just said, yeah, he has a, a notebook filled of like brake pads, Ford Escort, uh, you know, engine, oh, Ford Ranger. Um, it, it, any interior piece is mostly That's, Land Rover Defender. That makes so. I mean, it makes sense yeah. if you're, you know, the business owner trying to keep the wheels <laughs> on the train going, but that's otherwise a disaster. Yeah, that, that is a certified grade A dealer? headache. So. Like, taking two different cars apart that are this... Well, There's no dealers. In the 80s and 90s, there might have No, been. that's the... You, yeah. you know a guy that can import ago, cars, that's it. There was probably a, a dealer that had uh, yeah. a technical TVR service center. Yeah. They've had... Yeah. Well, speaking of which, I totally forgot. Ooh. I just drove a Lotus Exige, Ooh. and that was the same deal. The guy had to know a guy who knew a guy who mm-hmm. knew how to import them, and that was pretty much it. Uh, it was a 2007 it's Lotus Exige supercharged, um, and will go down as the best driving car. I, yeah, supercharged mm-hmm. 1.8 two ZZ engine. Um, that'll go down as probably the best Those are driving like 20, car on 200 seat. pounds and 240 horsepower oh 2000 flat i think oh it's like God. 2053 pounds um shifter was amazing the only downside was trying to get into it <laughs> because there's about a foot and a half between the door <laughs> opening and like the passenger compartment and being a big guy, there was, yeah. I mean, there was margarine being used. There was a can opener being used. I mean, it was, it was rough to get in and out of. And to the point where I forgot to do a POV drive portion, which I always include in my videos. And I looked at the owner and I was like, I have to get back in. And he was like, oh, go take it. Go do whatever you want. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. I have to get back inside the yeah. car and I don't want to do that. You know the I have to uh, contort myself the so. racing thing where you're supposed to be able to like get out of the car in seven seconds or whatever it is. That's not happening. That's, that's not happening. Yeah, that's not the exige. Yeah, the the owner of that car um, had a friend that has a full cage Lotus Exige. What? And they were having competitions and huh? how, uh. how fast you could get in and out. And I think the record was thirty one uh, seconds. That sounds oh awful. Like, yeah. Do you know much? Yeah. You know how much trouble a toddler can get yeah, in in right? thirty-one seconds? Like, <laughs> there's Dude. no way. Like, you're burning yeah. in that car. Like, you're just done. Like, oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I don't, but. and I, I love driving. I know we all love driving. I don't see any way in which that much of a horrible time getting in and out of a car every single time you have to use it makes is. The driving experience is worth that horrible time. Like, it's a hundred percent worth it. Like, it's a hundred percent worth it. It would it would suck to own because like you, I would be mm-hmm. resentful to take it to cars and coffee because I'm like I'm gonna moon half the audience there. It's gonna yeah. be terrible. Yeah. Like you know I don't need this on my record. Um, I, right. to the owner I was like, look away, <laughs> look away. I'm getting out. Um. No belt can hold me. Um, but the driving experience, it was picture mm-hmm. like what you want a sports car to drive like. Yeah. That's it. That's 100% what it is. And you get supercharger wine in oh, your ears that make your there's toes no, curl. Like, I mean, it's. Shit. So, th- I mean, there's a little bit of glass, but there's a. The mm-hmm. uh, roof scoop oh. is functional. So you hear the air and the supercharger wine coming over you, and it's it's one of the, it's one of the only cars that sounds hmm. way better on the inside than the outside because the outside you can't hear the supercharger yeah, it's wine. Like it's just that a little, and you know, VTEC Hondas, whatever. Yeah, yeah. The one I drove was in Krypton Green, oh, wow. which was one of like hmm. fourteen imported here to the states because they only hmm. made four hundred of the S's. Um, for 2007 and then they switched it to I want to say it was like the 
S260, because then it got a power bump to 260. Yeah. Something like that. So there, it was a one-year-only car, one of 14 yeah. in that color. It was Lotus pretty gnarly. <laughs> every every time we talk about this car, I just all I think about is the Toyota Matrix. Beautiful. Because yeah. it has the exact Beautiful same engine machine right the there. supercharger. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, those cars are great. And what's funny is um, I was actually talking to the owner's friend, who is one of the current Cannonball oh, Run casual. record holders. Um, and we were just like, yeah, we were casually chatting at his garage, uh, which had some very tasty vehicles in it. And um, we we're just talking about weird cars. And he's like, have you driven a Toyota Matrix? And I'm like, no, but I've driven a Vibe. And he's like, aren't they amazing? And I'm like, dude, oh. you have a V12 manual Vantage, a Diablo, and right. a Cannonball Run record vehicle. And you want to talk to me about Matrixes? Like, I, I, was, like I was ready to throw down. Paging Tate yeah. Morgan. Pontiac Vibes, dude. They're the best. So That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. That's... But I love that little car. Did every Vibe get the 2ZZ? I don't know. I don't think See, so. Now, now I have I, to know. Because there was also the... It was either the Vibe GT or the Vibe There GX. was a Vibe GT... I think that, and I would assume like all that would drive auto only. I know? think I could be wrong. Okay, maybe that was it. Maybe that was the all wheel drive. So they, they also all wheel drive was the mid trim, and then there was the more powerful GT. And so Ooh. it's the one ZZ FE and the two ZZ GE, which I think only the GT got the two ZZ. God, we've been talking about the matrix and vibes so much recently like yeah well because it's <laughs> it's a great car and, and attainable yeah. <laughs> obtainable and if you're gonna buy a pontiac if you are dead set on owning a gm it's the best gm that you can right. own exactly. because it's gonna be reliable actually work and that's it's coming from someone who's RF owned sevens. gm products <laughs> <laughs> well and we always we always think of like licensed vehicles being like carbon copies, literally everything the same on both cars, except for GM changed air conditioning, compressor and related hoses, heater hoses, why? heater core and serpentine belt. I was like, that's, yeah, why that's the they, part I want from they Toyota. Had a like, not... <laughs> Either that, uh, whatever it is, GM is very good at a couple of things and, Heat and yeah. AC is definitely one of them. I will drive any year GM, and mm -hmm. the heat is always cranking in it. It is always amazing. I will say, and they heat up very quickly. That's so. Hopefully, the best it gets those air I don't know any car that I've we'll driven see. in recent memory was the '86. It was unbelievable. Just the yeah the, the GT86 that the I Toyota. drove to Virginia from here. It was yeah. Over 100 degrees the entire trip. I had it set at like 72 on like fan setting two and was cold. It was amazing. Like, yeah. oh, dude. That best. car is great, by the way. That's a great buy. I, I had one as a press car, and it is, as of right now, the most miles I've ever How put many? on a press car was in that How far? Just, just banging around. It's and that cars. video did really well for me. I don't know why. So my rule of thumb is to not do more than 500 just to keep everyone happy. Um, nice. I did 498, um, I think. And that was with me not driving the Monday okay. that I still had it. Because I was mm -hmm. like, I where am I going to drive two miles? So yeah. I literally parked it for an entire day I, and still I did the just at the, the limit. So. I did 846 and told them I needed 850. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty casual about adding on mileage. I, I haven't asked yet because I haven't done. I haven't had press cars yeah, for long enough to like where I totally feel like I deserve situational. More it depends on if it's a high demand vehicle, if it's been okay. with a fleet a long time, if it's coming up on the end of its mileage, right? Um, and then if you know, just like what you're planning to do with it, right? Okay, yeah, I will. I, I haven't been in it for too long, so. speaking. <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm very gracious for any OEM that might be listening. I'm yeah. very, very gracious. It, it's been really cool. I have a actually funny enough. You guys were talking about Broncos. I get the Broncos the, the little Ford brother Escape? tomorrow. Sport. I get the Broncos Sport. 
Heritage. The Ford yes, Escape. The big Ford Escape. You know what, though? If you're between a Ford Escape and a Bronco, the oh, Bronco 100%. looks better, in yes. my yeah. opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bronco Sport. Sorry. Let me. And I'm also getting the Heritage Edition in Yellowstone Yellow, which yeah. is like a bit like a daisy yellow. <sighs> those with white wheels and a white roof. So I'm kind of excited for it. 20 over sticker. Dude, what? people, I'm sure right. that there are right. fucking people that. that are just going to, you know, mothball them and try and flip them at Barrett Jackson in 10 years. And like, ugh. why would we call it the Bronco 2? Yeah, it's literally the continuation of the Bronco 2 because the Bronco 2 was the smaller, you know, I don't know. Oh, no, you, it's a missed you, meant, opportunity. you meant you're getting the Heritage Edition yeah. Bronco Sport. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I thought you meant the full size yes. Bronco. No, yes, no, no, no. I meant twenty over for the full size Bronco Heritage. I think is that from the Savage Geese video? Uh, you know, um, it's a motor trend you? photo. No, 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 no. Savage Geese. Motor trend. Savage Geese is Canadian. Savage Geese is like no, they're like oh. uh, not far from me at all. Okay. Like at all. Um, and it's funny because, I mean, they are obviously fantastic, all this stuff. Um, they, mm-hmm. like, we always flip-flop press cars. That's how close we are. So, like, I, I put out a video of the Volvo XC90 recharge, and then, like, a week later, they put out a video of it. And I nice. looked at the mileage. They got it right after me. Um, <laughs> I got the RCF Track Edition right after them. Yeah. Um, Dude, and there's there have a been a bunch of cars that, that we, like, we text forth, each other but, and send uh, pictures because the cars will go from one of our houses to the next house. It's so funny. I've always wanted to do like a like a library sheet oh, in the glove box and like sign off like whoever has it that that's, week, like Sisterhood of the Traveling <laughs> Chrysler Pacifica. I was I always thought it was looking that's at the is. phone directory. Like when you connect your yes. phone, you can see who else has been on. Paul just texted me. He has the LC500 this week, and he sent me a picture, nice. and it says, Zach Pradle's iPhone, do you want to connect? And he, he's like five hours away well, from me, and he's like, do you think it'll the, reach? And I was dude, like, oh, God. Oh, I always God. try to I'm delete the phones. But that. The, the best was on WRX. When the uh, VB yeah. WRX came out, they had programmed Travis Pastrana as the default phone name in the uh, in the car. That was that was clever. Absolutely. That's pretty great. There was one I saw. Um, someone named their iPhone the Titanic oh, because shit. when it would try to, well, it would try to sink it, <laughs> and so it would say "sinking Titanic." Oh, and I'm so like, well, good. that's kind of funny. That's a good yeah, one, that's, actually. I'll, that's I'll let good. that slide. That's but, like yeah. that's like my my kids named our suburban Moby Dick because it's just a big white whale, <laughs> and I named the Wi-Fi uh, oh, in the truck. God. There she blows, <laughs> and so all the kids. You do you have the Wi-Fi pack, uh, package for it? Yeah. How expensive is that? I've 20, always wanted to twenty five dollars a month unlimited. You should just run your house Wi-Fi off of that. No, for four so, kids so, and like. Two, so two iPhones, uh, a non-activated iPhone, and a Kindle. That's our road trip normal. And then yeah. um, their Switch lights will connect to it, but their regular switches won't. Meanwhile, weird. that's okay. the truck that yeah, will stay at 69 right. degrees. Well, so... Yeah, I, that's just <laughs> some that's GM funny. engineering prude that won't let my um, AC sit at 69 forever. <laughs> I so I have that 2019 Mazda 3 which I love to death and I will be buried in that automobile um, I brought it to the dealer because you can get a Wi-Fi hookup and I was like hey like I was just wondering how much it is like what it would take I they they went to like several salesmen <laughs> they're like we, we don't know how to hook it up well, we have no idea so I, I asked everyone at the dealer they had no idea just... how to hook it up so I just don't have it oh no so it's like, well, like it's just usually me and my girlfriend. So like, it's fine, right. whatever. But, um, I, I, they, no one knows. So I, I don't know how much those things go. I'm like, is it a thousand dollars a month? Is that it? Like, do I have to, so do mine, I have to pay? Do I have to beg? When I bought it, it came with, I think it was like three months or eight gig, which the kids went through eight gig in like six days. Like it was yeah. just 
gone. Yeah. And then I was like, well, mm-hmm. I I need that now. I need that to keep working. My so depends on it. How, how? Yeah. yeah. Like, um, and then so I I think I got online and it wasn't it wasn't it's not an OnStar service. It is separate from OnStar and GM. Um and then like through through the Chevy website, I think I found it. It's an AT&T package. It's only 4G LTE um, because the truck's from 2017. But it works mostly. There's only one spot in like rural Montana that it dropped out to the point where the kids were like, there's no Wi-Fi. Like normally I hear no complaints from connectivity back there. Well, that's the thing. I know my car is connected because I can always Mm -hmm. use the app to lock and unlock and all this stuff. And I actually got a check engine light when I was down in Tennessee mountains and I called them and I called my dealer back at home, 800 miles away. And like the phone reception was super spotty, but they're like, Oh yeah, we can pull up your check engine light here at the dealer. And they told me exactly what the problem was. And they're like, yeah, you're good. And I was like, how'd you connect to my car? I was literally in Smoky mountain national park, which is like notorious for no cell reception at all. Um, and they were able to connect to it quicker than my phone was able to connect to them. So I don't know how, but whatever. Yeah. But I, speaking of which I have done more off-roading getting back to the, the roots of this podcast. I have done more off-roading in my Mazda three than any other vehicle. Hmm. And I've done probably more in that Mazda three oh, gee, than some G bone. If you've done ever. any, then you've I'm done very proud of that. <laughs> I have Hell three wheeled yeah. it. I've driven it through a stream. Um, I've driven it. I mean, I, there's a huge gouge running down the entire center because I, I high centered it on some rocks. Oh, no. Um, and Dude. I missed the oil pan by this <laughs> much. I was pacing and I got under it and I literally missed the oil pan. My cat is damaged. My That's um, fine. entire under tray is damaged. But it missed the oil pan, and I was out in Big Bend National Park, and that wait, I think it's like Big two Bend's hours. The next aggressive, yeah, dude, you were in the uh, middle of, of nowhere. <laughs> Skin plates from your car. Yes, I was. So here's the thing, I could because my end goal for the car is to drive it to the yes. Arctic Circle. Well, which we can okay, touch sorry. On in a second, in full disclosure, um, I I want to get those low skid on brain power and yeah. can't probably make it through that so i'm going to propose another show to talk about <laughs> the uh the mazda going to the arctic circle yeah we'll definitely talk about that the the one thing i will say with the skid plate is that it bolts to oh, the no. plastic bumper mounts so it doesn't bolt to anything solid from the research that i've done so if i hit a rock yeah. it's just gonna crack my bumpers as opposed to it would probably protect my oil pan, sure, but yeah, like right. it's gonna that shatter everything like, around it. You got it. <laughs> so at that point, it's engineer. I'll probably end up damaged. Engineer still solution. functional. Yeah, so, yeah. I'll probably do something like that. I'm gonna do a, a like an inch and a half lift and stuff. all that stuff. So, and I I think I have a link for you on how to set up the Wi-Fi in your infotainment for your Mazda. It's like stand on one very foot, much appreciate your belly, that, and that would be very nice. Time, sob in a circle. Well, like <laughs> the page with pictures is in English, but all of the image, like the map images, look German, and then the picture at the top is oh. definitely right hand drive. So, like, and I didn't, I didn't sure. translate. All right, so I didn't hit yeah. Google Translate. So we'll, I'll send it to you in an email. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate <sighs> that. Well, sweet. We'll yeah, wrap up the I show mean, before if you guys want to keep going, pumpkin, which is <laughs> don't let normal for us. Just my brain is like uh, collapsing. I got two hours of sleep on Monday night, so yeah. Oh, good. Uh, good, yeah. good. That's healthy. That's about right. Yeah. 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 Your call. <laughs> As it, like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can rate and re- review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. We are on YouTube as well. Um, you can like subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find Zach at shooting cars on YouTube. And then you're just at Zach Pradle everywhere else, right? Yeah. I gave an Instagram for the channel. Uh, it's shooting underscore cars Ooh. because some guy took shooting cars. 
Um, but yeah, YouTube is my, that, that's where I'm going to be posting seven days a week. You're going to get a new car review every single day till the end of the year. Um, I'm trying to think of the cool stuff I have coming up, um, coming out soon. Of <laughs> course, now it's all leaving my head, but I have a 70, uh, Dodge Challenger coming out. I have a very, very mint Ooh, Mazda B2600 yeah. pickup. You guys might like that one. Um, a little Ford Ranger. <laughs> yeah, ba- basically. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other trucks coming up. Um, no, I'm supposed okay. to film a new F250 somewhat soon. But anyway, so uh, cool. all on shooting cars on YouTube. Sweet. Yeah. And Thanks. Cool. I nice appreciate you guys having me on. Definitely. We appreciate you coming in, considering I emailed you <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting for that email. So when it finally came in, I was like, it's finally time, baby. Yeah, I, I knew I owed it. you a show, a and I owe Corey a show. I got to give Corey. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, That'd be great. Was it GT Garage Talk? Um, yeah. He, he's more Texas, so I knew he'd have more truck stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you so I'll, much. I'll prepare some trucks next time. So. No, you're good. We like Don't talking about weird stuff. So, <laughs> Ford Model yep. A, check the box. So, we're good. There it is. Yeah. yeah.